Hi, I'm Brett, and today we're going to talk about the Evo 10. Um, even though uh, pretty soon this car no longer will be produced globally, it is still a very popular car from a modification point of view, and it's a car that I've enjoyed doing a lot of work on, having owned a early model Evo 10 for close to five years with the five-speed transmission. And what we're going to talk about today is a very touchy subject about cold air intakes or air intake modifications. I'm going to tell you why you actually don't want a modified air intake on your car. Now that may come as a bit of a surprise from a workshop owner who um, wants to sell parts and modify cars for improvement, but in the next five minutes we're going to go into a little bit of detail and have you understand why a modification to an air intake in some cars is good and why a modification on air and air intake on some other cars is actually bad. And this particular car is a car that came into us it's got the SST six-speed semi-automatic transmission. Uh, the, crew, the client contacted us saying there was a few things that he was concerned about with some gearbox rattles and some other cam chain problems which we arranged to get him fixed under his new car factory warranty with Mitsubishi. And then he was commenting about the general overall lack of performance and slow, lazy drivability and why his car wasn't going as good as what he thought. So we did a road test and extensive um, report on it and gave him some information back and I actually encouraged him to put his standard airbox back in the car but he wanted to leave this part in place for two reasons. One, he'd already bought the modified air intake and the um, silicon connector to the turbo but um, didn't want to go to back to his factory standard airbox because he liked the way it looked and he liked the way it sounded. Now that's fine and I think that's a good thing as long as we all understand there is upsides and downsides. And what I'm going to read to you is just the notes on the final tune from our head tuner. Um, complete dyno tune to suit existing modifications. Intake setup is poor and worse than factory standard airbox. Contributes to poor initial throttle response. Ingests hot air from the engine mode. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, introduces idle instability, which varies depending on the thermofans coming on and off. And hold that thought, we'll talk about that as well. Um, causes the auto blip on SST down change to hesitate and causes inconsistency in engine load readings above 5,500 RPM, which causes tune instability as well. Um, as we then went further on to know, client wanted it, so we've tuned it to suit. Um, there is some other separate issues which we can discuss with the client separately. So one of the things I wanted to show you, and I get my video man to come in close, down in the back here, is one of the two thermo fans that operates on the back of the engine radiator. Now, when you've got an air intake like this and that fan turns on or off, believe it or not, the engine idle will change because the airspeed coming across the back here will change the air intake and then that is measured by the airflow meter sensor and then again changes the way the engine performs. Another thing is you've got this air intake sitting in the engine bay and it's no longer using the design from the Mitsubishi engineers with an enclosed air box, which on the factory standard Evo consumes the air from this air intake here, which is in front of the radiator, which comes through the front of the grill and over the radiator support panel. And that's one of the reasons why the bonnet on an Evo 10 has got this dip in the seal here, because this seal seals on the back side of the cold air intake for the factory standard air box. So when you're actually putting one of these in, the general industry term is CAI, cold air intake, when actually what it should be is HAI because it's a hot air intake. You don't want hot air intake going into the engine other than what we're talking about with the modification and changing with the airspeed, but also hot air doesn't give you as much performance as cold air. The other thing you've got to remember is the airflow meter sensor or MS sensor as it is on an Evo 10 is calibrated for a factory standard airbox. So when you put a modified intake on it like this, if the airflow and the direction of the flow is not exactly the same as the factory standard airbox, that signal out of there is going to change the load settings, which is part of the way the engine ECU records and manages the engine performance. And then that then adds more work to your tuner's job when he has to custom tune your car, which then adds more cost and an unnecessary change to the way it all works. And unfortunately, sometimes these signals cannot be changed in a positive way to get you to get the car to go as good as what it should. Now, I talked earlier on about why you may want one of these bigger intakes, and that is a case when the airflow capacity of the factory standard airbox for the modified engine is greater 
than what the standard airbox can consume. So if you've got a monster tune engine running big horsepower and the air in the engine is going to be consuming more than what the factory standard airbox can flow, then yes, you need to start considering going to modified air intakes, which can then flow more air. But more often than not, that is not the case. If you've got an Evo 10 running standard um, internals, a modified air intake is not going to give you any benefit other than noise and looks. If you've got a, a, a Subaru STI with um, standard internals, same thing again. So from a summary point of view, if you're looking at these types of parts, and I'll get my camera to come up show it, you can see this is a an oiled cotton foam filter on an adapter that bolts onto the factory standard airflow meter. And I may add, this here, believe it or not, when it's all rattling around and you're driving down the road, believe it or not, will actually change the signal in the airflow meter as well because this is not designed to vibrate. If it's loose and it doesn't have the nice neat bracket that this does, which is, can make it even worse, um, and you've just fitted one yourself and it's even worse than that, I strongly recommend that you seriously consider what you're going to do with your air intake. Um, I'll load some dyno figures because this particular one doesn't do a comparison um, to a factory standard um, Evo 10 um, and that way you can get a bit more of an idea of what we're talking about. So there you have it, the contentious issue about whether you do or do not want a modified air intake on your car. What are you going to do? Hopefully this information will help you form an objective decision on what suits you and where you are in the world you can follow some more technical information on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But for today, I'm Britt Middleton. Thanks for watching.